Assalamu alaikum. Today I sit down with a powerhouse from the UK, Saima Duhare. She is the co founder of Halal Fresh, a recipe book and five star ratings. Yes, you heard right. Okay, so let's meet this amazing Muslim businesswoman that she will tell us a bit of her story and how to stay on track when you build a business as a Muslim businesswoman. Here is the talk. Hi, Saima. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Fatima. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. The sun is out. I'm so disappointed because I can't go for a walk. So I'm like stuck at home. Too much work. <laughs> is, is the sun out here? Because yes. it's been snowing for the past couple of days and it's only now started to clear. Only now. It's oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, freezing. Okay. Good. I'm happy. It's like spring day here in Corsica. So I'm like, I'm happy. No complaint. So enjoy this, <laughs> the, the snow. <laughs> I am going to enjoy the snow. I don't, cl I don't complain about the weather yeah. because weather is one of the top topics that are discussed within the UK. Yeah. And I've, I've stopped discussing it. The weather sure. is the weather. Yeah. For me, it's not about the weather. I think it's, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just bad clothing. That's it. True, true, true. You Especially right, during winter. Yeah. Exactly. If you've got the right clothing, then you don't feel the cold. Of course, obviously you can't, you know, there's other yeah. parts that you feel with your hands if you're not wearing <laughs> gloves and your face, of course. Yeah. But yeah, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just bad clothing. That is so true. I like uh, to break the ice with, you know, that topic. But I was really happy this morning <laughs> <don't> know, <laughs> with the sun. I was on my terrace and everything. Okay, so I'm super excited to have you on so excited to have this conversation with you because I feel like um, it will definitely bring a lot of value to many of um, us Muslim, you know, businesswomen or Muslim women in general. I'm fascinated by these conversations and just to, you know, learn more about you and your experience and uh, about Halal Fresh also. So that will be uh, cool to know. Okay, fire away. Fire nice. away. Okay, so I always start with the challenges. Um, but before that, let people know who you are. Like, tell us more about who is Saima. Okay. So I'm Saima and I'm the founder of Halal Fresh, which is the UK's first halal non-subscription recipe box. I launched April, 2019, and it's almost two years that I've been in the business. Right. How was it launching Halal Fresh in, in the UK? How was it? Um, it's been a long journey. I started the journey back in 2016 because I had no formal um, training of um, opening a business or even informal training of opening a business. All I had was armed with passion because I'm a foodie. I love eating. I love feeding. And I thought, okay, let's see whether or not I have what it takes to open a recipe box business, having no experience at all whatsoever or any contacts, let alone for that. Sure. So I spent a lot of time researching, you know, hanging out in, in foodie festivals and with foodie people. And slowly but surely, alhamdulillah, I sort of built myself. And the more and more I worked towards it, the more and more I realized that this is what I wanted to do. Mm. Uh, which is really exciting and also very challenging and also very frightening because opening up a business not having any experience at all whatsoever yeah I thought you know what's the worst thing that can happen the worst yeah. is that you'll fail and learn or you'll succeed and alhamdulillah so far it's been it's been a great journey I, I love I love what I do I, I work with food you know so yeah that's nice you know what I had uh, I had a talk with uh, Mona Al-Idrisi from Lara Boutique last week yeah. so I've already you know put the episode on on my YouTube channel and you know right at the end she was like if you want to start a business you got to be passionate because without the passion you're gonna if you fail you're gonna you know just quit and if you have the passion this is you know helping you be resilient and just continue forward because we know that it's tough to build a business I mean come like going from zero and and making it successful I mean when you see the stats for businesses it's um it's just you know like too many businesses closing down like after five years or like 10 years like over 50 percent I don't remember the stats but I mean you need that passion uh a hundred percent so to overcome the struggles and um uh, Okay, so let's talk about the struggles. Can you share with us like your top three? I always say three, but 
whatever you want, um, struggles that you had as a Muslim businesswoman? Firstly, I'd like to um, follow on from what um, from from the conversation about being passionate. Passion is number one because passion is the only thing that supersedes the days where you want to crawl under the bed and say whether and whether I can't do this. Right. And what motivates you and what charges you is the passion and the purpose and the why you started your business. And that's something that you always have to go back to as to why did you start it? And it has to be bigger than just the financial gain of it. Yeah. Right, how are right. you benefiting your how are you benefiting your community? That is the first and foremost. Secondly, with regards to challenges, the challenges I would say is not knowing anything about business. When I first started, I wanted, um, I built, I, um, I created a, um, or should I say, I, I put together a business plan. I put together a financial forecast and I went knocking on people's doors to see whether or not they'd invest in my business. Mm. And I got knockbacks from everyone that I, I, I approached. And rightly so, because who's going to invest money in somebody that cannot demonstrate that they'd run a business, let alone a food business. So that was the first challenge. So in the end, I decided that I needed to put my money where my mouth is. And my mother very kindly um, lent me the money and I had money of my own. And that was the first thing. So the first mm -hmm. challenge is trying to kind of raise the funding, yeah? Okay. And then I had to use my own and of course my mother's money. So that's the first thing. The second challenge is, are almost as if looking for a chef. And because I'd never worked in the food business, again, finding the right team was also a challenge because I couldn't prove that I'd been in the world of food. So people were reluctant to work with me, but Alhamdulillah, you know, after perseverance and six months it took me to find a chef. So that was the other challenge that I had. And then on top of that, the other challenge I had was, um, was ingredients because I needed ingredients. And in terms of you know, I didn't have the, the buying power. I, every ingredients that I wanted, it was almost, you know, what's your mini, minimum order? And I couldn't, I couldn't say what my minimum order is. So I couldn't dictate or even, even forecast that how many people would buy my recipe box at this stage. So that was another massive challenge for me. The other challenge was, of course, the operation side of things, the logistics side of things. Uh, so yeah, there were lots and lots of challenges that I had to overcome step by step. So there was almost... I was working towards a, a, a sort of, you know, putting my ducks in a row of what, what mattered. And the first thing was, of course, creating the concept of Halal Fresh. What does Halal Fresh mean? What is the purpose of Halal Fresh? Putting that out there. What did I want the brand to look like? What I wanted to feel like, you know, friendly, fun, honest, transparent. Mm. Uh, from that, then it was creating the website. And then in parallel to that, you know, finding the chef, as I said to you, and so all of these challenges were almost a challenge. Everything was a challenge in all honesty. Right. No, yeah. That wasn't a challenge, but it was a good challenge. It was a challenge that every time I was challenged, the more I realized, the more I wanted to do this. Because sometimes challenges present themselves. Are you resilient? Like you said earlier on. Mm -hmm. And do you have what it takes? And what I've learned being an entrepreneur is, and I don't even think I deserve that title yet. You know, an entrepreneur is something that, you know, you... I don't know whether I deserve it, but I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll accept it. You know, <laughs> are you resilient? Do you have the perseverance? Do you have the the mindset for it? Yeah. Are you passionate enough? Are you dedicated enough? All of these things matter towards becoming, opening, uh, you know, starting a business and 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 working your way through it because your business evolves, like you evolve. You you change as the business changes, and your business is dictated marginally by, by your customers as well um right. i'll say large margins of that would be dictated by your customers because you are serving your customers and you're learning about them you know you put the product out but by the end of it you're, you're they're teaching you what they want from what the service that you provide them so it's it's a it's a two-way street what yeah. what, what yeah, you do yeah 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 100 yeah, percent. yeah i mean um from hearing you um it's a lot of trial and error you know, you can't have like the great idea and that a lot of people, um, you know, start in this analysis paralysis and they're like, oh, I need this amazing idea. But actually, you know, all the products, they didn't, you know, start as the final version that we see, for example, all the, the successful product. It took trial and error, and of course, evolution and change. Um, and it took the feedback of the customers to understand like, well, this is what I need and not what I think my product is, right? Because you're doing that for, for your clients. So that is super, super interesting what you said. Um, you talked about um, building a team. So 
how did you overcome um, all these challenges of like knowing nothing about building a business to two years later, still running, you know, Halal Fresh and like growing it? I think the first thing is when you look for a team is, do their vision align with yours? Are they as passionate as you are about what you're doing? And the first thing is when I've, when I've, you know, worked with chefs, they're passionate about what they do. They, they love food. They want to be creative in that, in, in, in that space. And like myself being a foodie, I like being creative and I like introducing meals that one wouldn't normally think of cooking at home, mm-hmm. putting ingredients together that you wouldn't normally think of putting together. And I think making that exciting is the first and foremost, you know, when I had a graphic designer, again, was she interested in food? Yes, she was, but she, Did she believe in what I was doing? Yes, she did. And I think that's the first thing I look for when I work with people. Their passion is what what drives me. It doesn't matter whether you have the experience or not, because some people don't have experience, but they have everything else that I I get excited by. Even with my web developer, he's worked with, you know, when I was creating my website, he hadn't worked with food um, websites before, but he was passionate because yeah. food is food, right? Everyone gets excited about food and everyone gets a recipe box as well. So they get to yeah. try the food as well. And yeah, it's yeah. really interesting that when you are working with people, it's it's looking at the, the, the basics for me. You know, skills you can learn, of course. I mean, if you're hiring an accountant and he needs to have accountancy, it doesn't necessarily mean that he needs to be into food, but right. it's just a bonus that they're into food, right? But if you're working with a chef, it, they need to be into food. If you're working with a graphic designer, they need to be they need to be creative and they need to get excited mm-hmm. about the, mm-hmm. the, the work that they're doing, you know? And mm-hmm. so, yes. So the team, um, you were looking for the vision. Were you always clear about that, about finding people that were aligned with your own vision uh, on uh, for working for you? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Because for me, um, I'm, I don't, when I manage people, I don't micromanage anyone. I don't believe in micromanaging because of what, what we do as Hello Fresh, we're very creative and creativity. You can't stifle it. It needs to, something that needs to breathe. It needs yeah. to grow. You need to be flexible with it. And so again, working with my graphic designer, when we're putting, um, you know, even though we have a template for a recipe card, but it still has that flexibility where I'll go to and say, what do you think? Do you mm. think we should do it this way? Do you think we should do it that way? So it's always a two way street. I have an idea, but I'm also open to other people's ideas and their suggestions mm-hmm. because you can't go in and say, I want it this way. Then you're, you're not opening that dialogue to learn something from someone else's point of view or their perspective on something. So to me, that's again, working together as a team. I don't like to work as a boss or I'm your, you know, I don't like that word. For me, I work with team. I work with people and we grow together. You know, of course I I steer the ship, but it doesn't mean that I'm always right in that, you know, because I'm also learning as well. Yeah, you need this healthy culture, especially in startup and in the, like the growing phase of a company, you need to have this openness and um, as you said, the creativity and that's the most important thing. So um, yeah, I believe you because you're just, you know, living it and and, and it works. So, you know, so it should, you know, yeah. No, thank you. I mean, I've had my graphic designer for her. She's been with me for over a a year and a half now mm. chefs pretty much has been with me from the beginning and that's a testament to the way that I work because yeah. it shows that people are not it's not transient you know you come one month and you go the next month to me it's not about that it's about working with people that stay with you and grow with you unless they want to leave absolutely and move yeah. on to bigger and better things of and course that's completely different right yeah. Yeah. because there's always something that people want people change mm. so for me um I love working with people. I'm a people's person. So I love yeah. it. I just love yeah. that. Any, if I could work with 10 different chefs, I'll work with 10 different chefs, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that time comes, inshallah. Inshallah, yes. From all over the world. And, you know, like Islam is a global religion and we have so many, uh, you know, especially regarding food, the culture, like the food culture is like uh, gigantic and Mm. uh, it it is still evolving because it's mixing with the the Western culture. So like it it became this huge thing. So I'm I'm super excited. And uh, I checked out the recipes on the website. They look delicious. Look, the the pictures are like professional pictures. They're like, okay between 30 to 40 minutes cooking well you know it's feasible so I have hope for myself like who's not a foodie <laughs> <laughs> you know and not a chef 
No, do you know what the thing is? If I was at the moment, we don't deliver to um, France, but inshallah, when we do, it's on the it's on the it's on the cards, right? Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, I would send you a box. Um, but yeah, I think food, like you said, it brings people together. It doesn't matter what where you're from, you know. It it really does. And when we create recipes, we always create recipes that we feel that people are going to enjoy and be excited mm. about because. Mm -hmm. I know, honestly, I don't know about yourself, Fatima, but there are days even when I can't even be asked to cook and I just want to cook something that's quick, that's easy, yeah. and I'm familiar with, right? Yeah. And I'm familiar yeah. with you get that. And I'm in food and I create the recipes all day long. Well, yeah. I don't, but me and my chef, we do it together, right? We develop them together. But yeah, we all get that way. And I've learned so much through food and so much about different cultures. It's, yes. it's, un it's, un it's unbelievable. Like Moroccan spices I've learned about, the Berbers, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the traditional um, cuisines. There's so much I've learned, which means it opens up to you to their culture as well. So it's not just about the food. Mm. It's about living, opening that window as well, which is really nice. Yeah. A hundred percent. Wow. Okay. So I'm super excited for Halal uh, Fresh to come to, to France for sure. Inshallah, pray, sister. Pray for Yes, me. I pray. I pray. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come back to you personally. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I want to know more about your experience of starting a business and being a Muslim woman. How was it for you? I, I mean, let me think about that one. And the reason why I have to think about it, because I want to be very diplomatic in the way that I answer this question. Um, <laughs> Or, or maybe not, or maybe not. Maybe this, I this, should, this channel this is not censored. <laughs> um, what I found is within our community, especially from the male aspect of things, mm -hmm. right, the support is not there. Or if it is there, you have to get to a certain level before people will stand up and listen to what you, what you have or what you... Yeah what you how you how you perform which is understandable right mm. um yeah i'm trying to be diplomatic here i'm actually <laughs> trying to be very diplomatic here um yeah it was a challenge within our community um only because when you are a muslim brand when you are a muslim service it takes a lot longer for you to prove it than it does if you're a non-muslim mm. right mm. because we are dubious of our own people we we don't trust them as much as we should do and where that comes from is a whole set of kind of worms that I'm not going to open right yeah yeah just to give you, to give you an idea um, I'm called halal fresh I have customers who ask me potential customers not the ones that I have alhamdulillah are you halal mm. now if you were going to go to a butcher would you ask that question mm. if you go to a restaurant that says it's halal would you go and ask that question again but I get to ask that question what how, how halal are you? Are you 100% halal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 yes. I mean, what made you think that I, I'm not? I mean, is there such thing as 50% halal? Yeah, you I, know, don't know. Do you, I don't know. You know, do you mix non halal with 50%? With, with you know? Well, well I, I guess this is what they do, right? Like, if you go to a restaurant, because now the halal word has only been um, to like food is this halal just the food like the meat is there like no pork or the food but now if you go to a restaurant that says that you know it's a halal restaurant and it happens a lot here in france they serve alcohol right and they tell you well we do that because we're in france and we have non-muslims customers that require you know yeah. that wants alcohol and alcohol sells right it, it is a big part of the business so it it, it it's it became like such an ignorance of just having people you know i'm not surprised having people calling you and asking you it's halal and it sounds stupid it sounds really stupid but it happens i mean you're living it so, and yeah I, 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 honestly do you know on, honestly it, it from now i mean i used to first think to myself but now i understand it's you know we go to pizza express and and we have a pizza there right or if, if mm. and but yet yeah. they sell pork and they sell alcohol right do we go and ask the question when you're making your making a pizza do you make it in a non-halal oven 
mm. and 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 a halal oven yeah. do, do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and so this this is where this is what it's so when you're a muslim you get scrutinized a lot more mm. and for, and this is one of the reasons why i'm transparent as to who my suppliers are right and i can't yeah. put all of my suppliers because mm. i'm always well, i have a few suppliers that i work with but for me halal just isn't about meat halal is a lifestyle right yeah. it's not just yeah. about you you end it with your meat it's about everything for me yeah. halal is yeah yeah. But yeah, so that's one of the questions that I get asked. Um, mm. I get asked that at least twice a week. Are you halal? Yeah, but it's super surprising because, you know, so for me, I'm, I'm not in a Muslim community here. So in France, in Corsica, and I grew up with not a lot like many Arabic and or non-Arabic Muslim people around me. I have like mostly French friends, let's say. And um, but I didn't know that you had such difficulty by being a Muslim business. Um, by appealing to like Muslim customers and Mona from Lara Boutique said exactly the same thing. She was like, you know what? Our customer base is like more non-Muslim than Muslim. Um, and I found it really surprising. And I asked her, you know, why do you think that is? And like, she gave me her answer, like, okay, what is your answer? Like, why do you think that is like you said, okay, we're dubious, uh, between each other, you know, as businesses, like, do you have any, like, you said you didn't want to open it, but like, give me two reasons, let's say. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I can only go by the hunch or the instinct or, right. or that. I don't, I can't, I, there's no statistics on it or mm -hmm. I can't, yeah. there, is, there is no, I've not put a survey for research purposes, but for my personal experience and my personal opinion. Yes. Yeah. I think because we are so indoctrinated by Western society and what this society offers in terms of services, that we think twice about buying from our own people because we don't have the same gravitas or the same advertising or the same popularity or visibility as 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 the Western brands do, right? Right. right. So that's probably one of the reasons as mm -hmm, to why. Mm -hmm. The other reason is if you look at it this way, um, for instance, like look at because I just bought a lovely um, serum from from La, um, La Boutique, right? Yep. Amazing okay. serum, right? Now that serum costs thirty five pounds, right? But it's an unknown brand. Yeah. But I would be ha not me, but I would be happy if we're going to speak objectively. I would be happy to spend thirty five pound serum at Lancome or at the other brands, right? Yes. Um, big brands, because it's recognized, but I'm going to question if I'm going to go to Laura Boutique and pay that money, because if I can get a brand for that, why should I pay for that? Do you see yes. what I mean? Yeah. And that's where, that's where those blurry lines are as to mm -hmm. why should we support our own for those reasons is one mm -hmm. of the reasons I would say, um, I could be, I mean, anyone can challenge me on that. I'd be more than happy to discuss that yeah. with them yeah. because I'm sure there will be people we want to. Oh, but it's but, your personal experience that is really interesting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's my personal. And I mean, even now I get compared to other recipe boxes, right? But mm -hmm. I'm a halal recipe box. Halal mm -hmm. meat is generally more expensive. It's not mm -hmm. as, as inexpensive as right. other Yes. Right? Yes. I'm a smaller business. I'm a startup business. I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm not at the same level as that. Inshallah, one day, yes. I'll. You know, that's mm -hmm. my, for me for myself as a business. I want to be huge, but it takes yeah. time. But yeah. in the meantime, what one needs to look at is you. We can't make comparisons. You've got to yeah. look at the individual brand and the service that they offer, and all of those things then come into play. But I think that's one of the reasons why. And secondly, I just yeah. I'm, I mean. Well, this is one of the reasons why I think being part of Nur and Zafir, which yeah. we're going to be part of, inshallah, right. yeah. and Nur and Zafir is promoting, you know, up and coming, edgy, creative lifestyle brands. I think yes. it's amazing, absolutely yeah. brilliant. And I want to be part of that. I want to be able to be able to purchase from those types of brands, which I'm slowly but surely am. I'm trying to get away from the Amazons. I'm trying to get yeah. away from the Ebays yeah. because yeah. They've, they've completely have taken over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over and they squash small businesses and especially mm. small Muslim businesses because there's so much lovely Muslim businesses out there that offer so much great products. But if again, yeah. it's down to yeah, the more yeah. you want something, the more you want it. 
I mean, a hundred percent. This is, I think we're living a new era and I'm, I'm so excited also to be part of it. Um, even for me, you know, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I started this journey and um, so I'm experimenting also, but I'm focusing on my coaching business uh, right now to make it really successful and to build my experience on that because, you know, also being distracted doesn't help, especially if you're a business and I know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. that. Uh, so uh, for the, especially if you want to be successful, but a hundred percent, we're living in a new era where we are seeing a lot of Muslim brands um, that are coming up with expertise, with quality. And, you know, it's just the start, it's the beginning. So we, it needs nurturing, right? It needs communication. It needs to build that trust, as you said. Um, absolutely. Really absolutely. And I think we need, yeah, absolutely. And I think we need to shift that mindset. And that's going to take a long time because it's been ingrained in us. And mm. I think the more Muslims like ourselves, like yourself, like myself, like the Arab, the Arab boutique, um, like what, what Martha is doing with Nur and Zafir, and there's so many other brands as well that I can yeah. really love are doing some great stuff. And I think the more and more that we start to push that push that um that paradigm the better and better that we will then become at actually working together and supporting one another yes that's the main thing right it's exactly. about supporting, supporting one another and 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 yeah it's huge yeah 100 percent. so i have two last questions for you okay um uh, the one question that i like is okay you started um halal fresh two years ago but you started four years ago so if you have to go back like four to five years ago and meet the Saima at that time, what is one advice that you would give her? That's a really good question. Patience. <laughs> okay. That's always, you know, that's one of the most repeated ones. <laughs> I think patience and believe and enjoy the journey. Mm. Yeah. Patience, believe and enjoy the journey. I love that why yeah you know because we all doubt ourselves all the time right and we always feel that we're not good enough and we always feel can i do this can i not do this and i think just believing in yourself no matter what is is key because that's what that's what carries you through and having faith in the journey is from the ultimate because everything that's given to us is already written right yeah. and if we continuously believe in that and of course whatever's written can be rewritten but if we believe that if God wouldn't put us on if we weren't able to do it, yes. right? Yeah. Whether whatever that is. And I think those are the days when I do have challenging days and hard days. Like now I'm thinking of how I'm going to scale, how am I going to do that? And I'm already sort of a little bit anxious about that. And I think, mm. no, don't know. If it's written, it will happen. Just work towards it. Enjoy the journey. Be more playful with it. Be more creative with it. Enjoy to play rather than focusing on... I need to do this, I need to do that, and I need to get I need to get there, and I need to get there. It's not about that because oh, everyone's journey is so different. You know, we all we can't compare ourselves, even though we do, but I'm learning a lot and more about not comparing and just comparing myself to who I was yesterday and who I can be tomorrow. Yes. Right? What I aspire to be. And that I am learning alhamdulillah. And it's coming through the fact that I'm becoming more and more connected. Yeah living in the moment and and that is really really important and not being preoccupied with with you know when people say what are your numbers what are your stats and what are all of these no you know it is what it is you know i'm enjoying the journey the numbers are there the numbers are not there it, it doesn't matter I'm, I'm doing what i'm doing and working towards that journey inshallah and the rest is to god that's it and that's where i am now and i'm so happy that i'm there now whereas four years ago oh my god i was just like a headless chicken you know yeah. i need to do this i need to get this and now i'm at a place where i'm at ease yeah. it is and i'll get there when the time is right have you heard of the story about the tortoise and the hare no. it's a folk, it's a british folk he says about the tortoise the tortoise takes his time in the journey just to give you a bit of an idea it takes his time in the journey but here's the hare jumping along trying to get there faster and faster and what have you but in the end, the tortoise wins the race because it took his time. It took in everything. It took in the scenery. It, it, you know, it gave itself time to breathe. It sat, enjoyed, took in, you know, and then the hair was almost as if he was slightly more arrogant, slightly more overconfident, overzealous, thinking I'm going to make it. It's not about that. I think it's good to have insecurities. It's good to have those 
doubtful days. It's good to have days that you're confident. It's good to have days where you ask, challenge yourself. It's good to days where you ask yourself, but it needs to come from a place of positivity and not negativity. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly what I preach, you know, as a coach. I mean, um, my uh, my studies have been really centered on positive psychology. And this is what they say, you know, nurturing those positive emotions, because this these are the ones that open up, you know, solution, creativity, so you can overcome your challenges. If you come from a place of need and, you know, scarcity, uh, you're you're going to be in a tunnel vision exactly and it's going to be much harder to overcome your challenges so and I love that you just you know uh, earned that wisdom by yourself you know it's it's really amazing and I want to acknowledge you for that because th this is this is it and once you understand that like everything open up and as you said at the beginning a skill you can learn everything is learnable but if you have this certainty this calmness this peace this belief well it will take you a long way absolutely honestly it's happened in the last i would say yeah and and be, and it was communicating to god honestly it's really yeah. really hard. it really does because who are what are you what are you chasing what are you we all want to get somewhere you get to one place and you go oh, i need to get there i want to get there I want to get there. There's always hunger. There's always that that need to keep propelling, to keep going forward. Yeah. But if going forward, you need to be enjoying that forwardness as well. One hundred percent. You know. Yeah. So lovely. I love that. And you saw like our voices just went, you know, lower and everything. It was like this is was <laughs> this was like so intense. So I love it. Um, like just zen mode. Exactly. It was the zen moment, like the wisdom, yeah. you know, my job. <laughs> A hundred percent. Last question. Is there any question you wish me to ask you that I didn't? I think you've asked me everything, actually. I mean, I wish I could answer the question that you said, the, the challenges that you faced, but you, uh, honestly, that's... Um, I'm going to open sure. up that yesterday, a little bit later, a little bit later, maybe down the road, a couple of more interviews, and I'll be like, yes, now I'm going to say this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got to come back. You said it. You said it. Okay. <laughs> give, me a year, give me a year, and then I'll be able to, because now and from until then, I'll, I will, I'll start to, I'll start to monitor it. I'll start yeah. to record it, actually. Yeah. I'll start to okay. record it and say, okay, this is it. <laughs> let's, keep, let's do our own research. <laughs> Let's do our research and come back and let's exchange notes. How about that? I love it. Okay, I agree. I'm going to do a year of interview and I'll tell you. Okay? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Taima. It, it was such a pleasure and I knew it. And that's why I asked you to come up here and to have this conversation and you got to come back. So thank you so much. Inshallah. And thank you so much, Fatima. And I wish you the best of luck with what you're doing because I think we need more coaches like yourself. We need more people to encourage you know, young people, especially to go out there and just risk and, and, and take that risk, you know, yeah, yeah. and now with the pandemic, just my closing thing would be, we become more entrepreneurs, we're thinking more outside the box, how can we make, you know, an extra, how can we get an extra income or an extra living, and I think yeah. this is the time where creativity has also been born in this time, and I think it's great that, you know, you you have this service that you can offer people. So yes, yeah. mashallah to you as well and alhamdulillah to you as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. So take care of yourself. Have a lovely week and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And here you are. I hope you liked this video as much as I did. And also this amazing conversation changed, you know, my perspective on some of the points about resilient and just, you know, keeping uh, a, a tight ship, let's say, surrounding myself with, you know, the right people to keep on track on building my own business. And, you know, I hope it did the same for you. If it did, well, like this video, subscribe, share this video with another Muslim businesswoman to to inspire to give an example and also to motivate there is the next video where I sit down with Mona Ali Jurisi and we discuss the difficulties of you know just communicating as a Muslim business brand to the Muslim community and getting known as a small and medium business so to the next video get focused get clarity and get started to live your best life